careful, it's slippery. Ah, there it is. Look at all that peritotite. Okay, I'm gonna collect the peritotite from three locations. This is one of three. We have permission from the city of Marquette to collect here for radiometric dating, dating of baby alike for uranium lead dating. Now there's some things we need to do first. First, when we go to date this, I'm taking from three locations for a reason. So we can try to get the biggest amount of sample we can because like I've said before, there aren't very many crystals in this rock to begin with to work with radiometric dating. So we want numerous locations. We do know it's basically one intrusion, uh, a stock if you will. It is igneous of origin. The only metamorphism associated with this rock is retrograde metamorphism, that serpentinization um, when it weathers. So we gotta avoid weathering rock. Now I'm going to take a good location and good notes of where we are here for this before I start taking samples. Then I'm gonna bust out my hand lens and I'm gonna start looking around at the rock to see where I can find coarse grained rock. Now, typically crystals of Badiolite or Zircon will be around 0.075 to about 0.25 millimeters in diameter. That's big enough for me to see with my microscope that I have back in the lab, but with I only have a 10X hand lens here, so I won't be able to see any of that. But I will be able to pick out coarse grained rock. And the coarser the rock is, the coarser the crystals are, the easier it is to find these things. So that's what we're gonna do here and then so the third step is I am going to collect the samples. We do have a scale to weigh it. I'm going to try to take a third from here, a third from the second place, and a third from the third place. Something I forgot to mention about this site and I noticed it while I was doing it. Now that we're leaving, you can see there's calcite veins in it. The peridotite, other than right here, down there where we got the samples, is lacking in carbonite and calcite veins, which is good for us. That means minimal risk of cross-contamination, and I don't know if you saw a squirrel. There he goes, chipmunk. This is stop two, but here you can see more of the breccia. I haven't been here before. And then you can see the contact with the Jacobsville comes up. And here, I'm not wondering. See, you can see veins within the peridotite. They're breaking it up. And I'm not wondering if this is what they thought was class within the Jacobsville, but this is actually a vein of carbonate. And that's with some carbonite in it. This, so this is a vein. You're looking at it. I mean, it wouldn't have been that thick. I could measure it. I need to map this stuff. Yeah, you can see the contact right there. So this is a intrusion to dike. Yeah, right there. So this thing was probably about a meter thick originally. But we're going to go there and sample there. Peritotite here is highly altered. There's a lot of veining within it. A lot of little dikelets within it. Oh, and it goes all the way up to the cliffs there. Let's see if I can find some relatively un unweathered stuff over here. Because this is probably all carbonate, actually. This little cave. Ah. Yeah, see, this is probably a fracture. Hill. And then you see these parts, it's just lined with calcite dikelets and then nothing. It's like random. Yeah, I'm gonna go this way. I 
All right, we are at stop three, getting our last prototype sample and trying to <laughs> take notes here as well. We are, as you can see, as far as we can get without being in the lake. We're deeper in the intrusion here. The last location, the second one, there wasn't a lot of footage there. There's a lot of carbonite intrusions like behind us there. All that veining is very prevalent there and it's throughout the rock. Here it's more scattered. So I'm gonna take it here because here we have nice coarse grain rock. And when we date veiny like zircons, whatever in igneous rocks, we want as coarse as we can get. Now, if we're trying to just take a sample to take to the lab to see what kind of rock we got, we don't just look for the coarsest grain. That's nothing to do with it. We look for what's representative of the rock. If the coarse grain rock is representative of it, then you take a sample of that. If finer grain stuff is, then you take a sample of that or a couple of samples. You try to get a kind of average, if you will, of the rock. But we're not doing that here. We're looking for the coarse grain stuff. And here we are closer towards the center of that stock that this prototype intruded. The closest Jacobsville is way that way. That will be our last stop. And as you can see, I think those are compu nice granites down there. So this thing isn't very big off the island. It really can't be. This is probably not far from the edge, just going under the lake somewhere. But we're gonna, I'm gonna collect some here and then we'll go and get the carbonite sample. The cove, the second location where we came from before we came here to the third location was over there. And yeah, that rock is very serpentized and it has a lot of these dikelets throughout it. And here they're just kind of scattered. So we should be able to get reasonable samples here. The second stop, the previous stop before this, I'm gonna have to let Malone know that he might not wanna use that unless we can't get baby lights from any of this other stuff. All right, so along with a dating sample, I am collecting a small lab sample for microscopic analysis to get a good detailed mineralogy and to see if this pluton changes at all from the edge, which is pretty much where our second sample came from towards the center here, suspected near center of the Pluton. Uh, and these big bags are for the dating. Dun, dun, dun. Coming for you, Carbon tonight. Go get you. It's down there. We are at the fourth and final location. We are not sampling the prototype here. We're sampling the carbonite. And as you can see, the carbonite intrudes the sedimentary rock it's suspected to be the Jacobs zone. You can see a clear bake zone right here. Not to mention the lenticular shape, the deformed beds within it, and then the contact metamorphism throughout the Jacobs zone, and then other sills. Uh, I think I'm going to actually get my carbonite from here. So we have a sill here, an upper sill, peters out, and we have this lower sill right on top of the prototype, which is right below my feet. So I think I'm going to sample this one. I see some good sized crystals in it. 